everybody, Tiffany from Life of Lees here again. Third video, same day for me, different day for you. Okay, so now I'm going to run through and show you what my third grader will be doing for her homeschool year this coming year. So I'm going to start off with that um, for her math, we are using teaching textbooks just like for her older sisters and she will be starting on math four and she really enjoys teaching textbooks and I enjoy it because someone else is teaching her the math. Although sometimes I do have to like help her and walk her through it, you know. Okay, so for um, her language arts, we have quite a bit of things. First of all, I will show you that in her book here, for her daily English practice, I just used um, from plain and not so plain.com. I printed off for third grade um, these worksheets. There's a worksheet for every single day, and it practices through all the things. Um, so you have writing practice, so rewriting the sentences, um, finding the subject of the sentence, underlying the predicates, etc., etc. We um, did use this last year, and I loved it. She loved it. It was simple, to the point, a page a day, but she learned so many things. So that was great. Um, and I'll just go ahead and continue with this book really quick here because it's all kind of language art stuff, except for, I mean, I guess we could include this in it because um, she'll also be doing cursive practice like her older sisters, but she, this is her first year gonna be learning cursive. Um, so her daily cursive practice is going to really start from learning how to form her letters in cursive. You get the drift, on and on. Um, and then also for her spelling, there's a couple things we're going to be doing. Um, this we started this last year because when I want, decided that I was going to homeschool from the beginning to the end, I was really nervous about teaching my child to read. I never taught a child to read before. So I decided that when I taught her to read that I wanted to really teach her to the sounds that the letters made, the sounds the letters made with other letters, and to really sound things out, and not just the way that's kind of typical in public schools now, which is just like memorization. And the reason why I want to do that is because I saw from my older daughters, particularly my my second oldest, is that I don't feel like that really works because then you come across words that you haven't heard or seen before and you don't really know how to sound them out. You haven't really been taught your phonics like in depth, okay? And so while a lot of kids are reading sooner, they only really know sight words and those words that they see and hear all the time and they don't have an in-depth understanding of phonics or vocabulary for that matter. So. I didn't want to do that. So I really focused on her learning the sounds and um, just having a really in-depth understanding of that, and which means that it happened a lot slower, which was a little hard and nerve-wracking at times, but we got there. And But what happened because of that, strangely enough, is that she's not a great speller. And so we just really started this last year really focusing on spelling, and we're going to really push through hard on that this year. And so there's a couple things we're doing. One is we're going to continue doing spelling power. I really like this and this is more of like that memorization type of aspect but it also talks about phonics. So each week you would get you get like a list of words and it talks about the sound that you're hearing in each of those words and all the ways in which that sound can be spelled and kind of like the rules of it. So you talk about that and then you're practicing the words. So you're getting that phonics aspect but then you're also like working on memorizing those words. And so the way we use it is we talk about the sound and all the ways they're spelled and the rules for spelling those sounds. And then she writes those words. And every day for that week, she writes the words and we talk about it. And then um, she does a, a spelling test. And so here in her notebook, she has... Um, her daily spelling that sheet that I just made so we do four days a week so she have day one day two day three where she just write the words and we talk about them and read them together and talk about why they're spelled that way and then she has her spelling power test book and so she would just write, we just put in the level the group the date and then 
she writes her words and then I would check them correct or not. And if she did really bad on a week, like let's say she got under 70%, we would redo that week, okay? Because I want her to master. I don't wanna just keep moving on and then get to where like she's just failing. No, I don't wanna do that. So she'll be doing that. And also, this is new for us. We will be doing spelling UC. And I chose, because again, she's not a great speller, and so I didn't want to push too hard, so we, I decided to start her with um, Wild Tales. So um, spelling UC, Wild Tales, level C. Here's the student workbook, and this is part one. And so what I understand, what I've read and researched about this and see by looking at the book is it's so copy work. And I was really fascinated by the idea of copywork at this point of her education. So there's the student workbook one and then part two. And then it comes with, you know, a little instructor's handbook. And it even came with, which she's really excited about, her own little colored pencils. We have so many colored pencils and crowns and markers and scissors and glue and paper and all the things, but boy was she excited to have her own little pack of colored pencils. Exciting stuff. Also, still along the lines of language arts, um, we have a little journal for her. I just made a little wild wire bound journal and I put it like kind of, I guess, kindergarten, first grade style where it has an area where she can draw a picture of what she's talking about and then write in her journal. It'll be different things from where I'll say, you know, just write about whatever you want or I'll give her some kind of prompt to write about in her journal. So continuing with language arts, um, we read a ton, like tons. She reads to me, I read to her, she reads to herself. We read lots. Um, and this year we will be doing the Anne of Green Gables. I have books one, two, three, and four. And um, The Lion, the Witch, and The Wardrobe. So I have the, I believe, full set. So Lion, the Witch, and The Wardrobe, Prince Caspian, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, The Silver Chair, The Horse and His Boy, The Magician's Nephew, and The Last Battle. And we will continue also, we finished Little House in the Prairie series and we are about halfway through um, The Rose Years, which I actually am enjoying The Rose Years even more, which I'm surprised because we loved Little House in the Prairie, but we are loving Rose Years even more. So we'll finish reading that. And then we also have, um, there's a series of books where it's um, who was, what was, where was. And we have a huge stack of them and we've read about half of them. And we'll just continue reading those two where basically we finish one and I just say, okay, go pick another one. And we just read bits and pieces here and there. And she loves them. Oh, she loves them so much. And they're so easy to read. Um, on top of that, um, I have this reading comprehension and skills little workbook here. So we'll be doing that. So it's just, you know, like a little reading with questions. And probably what we'll do is um, we'll... I'll have her read it and then I'll ask her the questions and just have her verbally do that with me. Um, and then I also have a couple um, guides for The Lion, the Witch, and the Robo or the Chronicles of Narnia that I picked up um, for sale. So again, this will probably just be a verbal. Like I won't be having her um, sit down and write the answers and fill things in. Like her and I will just go through it together and I'll just use that as a guide to help me make sure that she's comprehending and I also have a study guide for Anne of Green Gables so again same thing okay so I think that is it for the um, language arts stuff now let's see um, geography so for geography I um, decided to go ahead and order through Amazon um, the daily geography pack practice by Evan Moore for grade three um, and I just cut off the binding and put it in um, a binder because I just I prefer to have them that way I just do I don't know why so um, she'll be working through that just doing like a, um, a page or two a day or not a day because we only do it like once a week um, and then we'll also be doing mapping the world with art um, I do have the discs for this is the way I chose to purchase that and if you've never um, seen mapping the world with art um, if you have a student or 
I always say student. If you have a child that's really into like art stuff, you might really want to look into this. Um, the idea is is that each day you're drawing a little bit of the world um, and you build upon it. So it might start off with, you know, like a mountain range and a river into a lake and then you're drawing the town around it and then you're drawing the country around it. And as you build out, um, the child recognizes. Because we, we did some of this last year, this last year, and um, you get to like, you know, you're on like day five or something and, the ch and then your child's like, <gasps> Oh my gosh, I know this. This is da 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 that we drew. They recognize it as you're drawing it. And um, they also have like little um, readings that go along with it so you can kind of talk about and learn about the place that you're drawing before you do that. Um, and the idea is is that at the end of the, the year, the program, the child would be able to draw like the whole world kind of from memory. Um, and my eight-year-old loves drawing. When she saw this pulled out again, she was like, oh, yay! so fun <laughs> so um, little light on the geography um, but there will be a little bit of geography that kind of plays into um, our science so for our science I'm actually I picked this up at um, a thrift store I believe so thrift stores garage sales are great places to buy curriculum too um, so this is discover works Texas edition um, and so this is what we're going to be using for the base of our science and what we're, I'm going to do is I planned out um, basically we will read the lessons together and talk about it and um, and then there's like questions and again it'll be like verbally like I will ask her and she'll verbally let me know the answers to those questions and I've planned along with that. Now in that book they do have like some science things and some of them we will do, but other ones I thought that just doesn't really fit with us for a reason and so I had some hands-on um, activity books and so I went through and found the activities that matched along with the lessons and so I have the penciled in and pre-planned out and so I won't be like scrambling to find what we're gonna do. So we'll be using the hands-on life science activities for grades K through eight by Marvin and Tolman, as well as the hands-on physical science activities. These are the two that currently we will be using to go along with that book. Now, after the four months planning that I've pre-planned, penciled in is up, I will be pulling these out again and I also have an earth science activity book as well. So we might use some of those. And then I also grabbed these books that go along that will I have planned already to use with that. I have the story of astronomy, um, story of the universe, and a thousand facts about space. So we'll be using those as well for some resources. And as far as like the detailed with resources and activities, I've only planned for the first four months of school for that, so I'd, I'll have to look again for the rest. Oh, and then um, a solar system. Um, planetarium she's gonna make her own little planetarium and she's really excited about that um, so we'll do this kind of early on so that as the lessons come that she'll have like a visual aid to kind of play with and help her to understand some things um, and then now for um, history we are going to we, we started last year using story of the world and we're really enjoying it because we really enjoy the stories that um, are in the story of the world. So we'll be doing the story of the world volume two, the middle ages, um, from the fall of Rome to the rise of the Renaissance. And I have the activity book that goes along with that. So I've looked into that and planned which activities we will be doing. Um, this is great. Like if you're going to do story of the world, I do suggest you get the um, activity book. They also have a test book, which for my, for volume three and four, I do have the test books, but I don't have it for this volume which is fine because for my third grader, I'm not really looking to use that anyways yet. Um, but like in this, for chapter four, it says it has encyclopedia cross-references, um, it has review questions for the different parts that you've read. Um, it has additional history reading. It tells you, you know, the name of the book and author and that kind of thing. Corresponding literature suggestions. Um, it has map work in the back, so it has printables in the back that you could tells you what page, coloring pages, um, and then it also has um, project ideas, several of them. So it's pretty thorough. I mean, you can see like all that, all this, and all this. 
and and then that page there and that's all just for that the one chapter that you're reading so it you don't have to run around and look for stuff to go with it it kind of tells you right here where you can find some more information but I of course always suggest that you do your own research because just because they say it's the right information doesn't necessarily mean it is. So this is the base of our history and I have, I didn't pull out all the additional reading materials but I have tons of other books that match along with the time period that we'll, we'll read bits and pieces here and there as well. We'll do lots of activities, we'll have lots of discussions, all that fun stuff. And then for her folder, despite the fact that she loves art and stuff, she didn't really draw pictures, she just wanted to play with all my stamps and stickers and put them all over hers but hers is the same thing um so she has her monthly sheet and then her weekly sheets with penciled in um what she would be doing each day and because she is younger and i still work with her very much hands-on i don't really have her working independently yet even though she probably could i'm just i guess i'm just not ready to let go um so she will do those things those days and then also for her um, for her own reading she will do reading beyond all this so the all the books I showed you is books that we will be reading together but then also I just have a little page here to just you know encourage her so she'll be picking she has tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of books to choose from because every time we go anywhere she ends up with stacks of books in the cart I don't know how um, and so she'll just put the title and the date she starts it and the date she finishes the book and so then she could just see and she always is very encouraged by seeing how quickly she reads something it excites her so much even if I say okay you got 30 minutes go ahead and read and then when that timer goes off she's like oh, I just read like 35 pages okay or whatever you know it excites her. Um, so that is basically everything that my third grader will be doing for her third grade year. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.